Yes. So uh, welcome to Millennial, Benji. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. And uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, that I could be here on the last day of the live streams. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted to that I'm wearing a purple, my, you know, purple T-shirt because I thought it was kind of festive. And it seems to associate me with this purple T-shirt ever since the America trip two years ago. So I hope you all, hope you all enjoy it. Um, all right. All right. Now, uh, with, with no, uh, so Benji, please introduce yourself uh, to the audience and uh, briefly uh, first explain the, the two projects uh, and then we'll get into the, the off you go. Okay, uh, and first off, you mentioned your shirt, so I'll, I'll show off mine. I broke out the, uh, the Christmas sweater for this episode, so... Uh... I figured millennial would be a good time to break out the ugly Christmas sweater. Um, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to introduce Thank myself. You. Uh, my name is Benji Buckles. My YouTube uh, channel is banned from Facebook. Uh, it, it's called banned from Facebook. It, it's not banned from Facebook. And uh, my Facebook page is called the Libertarian to Alt-Right Pipeline. And uh, so for you all today, what I wanted to do was uh, map out my uh, the, the timeline of, of my life, my story and how I became a Libertarian and then how I went down the Libertarian to Alt-Right Pipeline myself and what I learned from that. And so uh, if, if you're ready, Woes, I'll go ahead and get into uh, how I became a Libertarian and then how I became Alt-Right. That's fine. Absolutely. Go ahead. This is a story that I think people have asked themselves. So um, I think it'll be interesting to hear uh, how it happens. So off you go. Take it away. I won't interrupt very much because there is a... So off you go. Okay, yeah. So the reason why I wanted to uh, to do it like this and map it out in the timeline of my story and how I became... Uh, alt-right is because I think a lot of people uh, will relate to this. I, I think this will resonate with a lot of people. I think uh, a lot of people in the alt-right took this same path. And when they hear, um, when they hear my story, they're going to relate to it quite a bit. So I was born in Appalachia, East Tennessee, to be exact. And I was raised by union workers, blue collar workers, um, they were Democrats. It was the 90s. They were, uh, you know, Clinton blue collar Democrat uh, union workers from the South. And um, because of that rather democratic upbringing, uh, I, I grew into somewhat of a communist in my teenage years. Um, but I always had an interest in foreign policy. And so my red pill moment was when Muammar Gaddafi was assassinated. Um, with me being, you know, the typical commie inclined socialist American type, um, I, I looked at Gaddafi as a somewhat admirable figure who, were, who was doing positive things for his people and whatnot. And so then when I saw, um, you know, the way that he was brutally assassinated um, by our government, uh, it, it really woke me up that uh, the story I was getting from, from my party, the Democratic Party, uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the truth, um, that they were just feeding me, feeding me a bunch of lies uh, and they had their own agenda. And so I started looking into it. Uh, I got into Ron Paul because of his anti-war message. And, um, and through Ron Paul and then Rand Paul, I got introduced to uh, libertarianism proper. And so I, uh, the first libertarian material that I read, uh, it was at the recommendation of Rand Paul in an interview that he did, um, was Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. And then after that, I got into Milton Friedman, Walter E. Williams, Thomas Sowell. And then from that, I got into a little bit of a deeper dive into uh, libertarianism. I read some uh, Carl Menger, Max Weber, or Weber, um, 
Mises, Rothbard. And for a while, I kind of settled that uh, I, I settled with Rothbard. I thought that his uh, interpretation of libertarianism and the non-aggression principle, I, I thought that uh, that was true libertarianism and uh, everybody else wasn't doing libertarianism as good as Murray Rothbard. And then from that, I got into uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe. And I got involved with the Libertarian Party myself. I uh, even held an elected position. I was the regional coordinator for the East Tennessee Libertarian Party. And uh, I, at the same time, I also got involved with the alt-right. I was starting to uh, deconstruct identity politics and everything. And I started to reject identity politics. Um, so, so I was getting involved with the Libertarian Party and the alt-right simultaneously. And I was really... Uh, reconsidering identity politics and their value and everything. And at this time, I, uh, I started a Facebook group called the Alt-Libertarian Movement. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to take what I saw the alt-right was correct about, and I wanted to apply that to libertarianism. And it didn't take me very long to find that uh, the Libertarian Party itself was not very receptive towards that at all, and uh, that the, the Libertarian Party has, in America has been taken over by leftists, by socialists, um, and, and it is not Murray Rothbard's uh, vision of libertarianism. And um, so because of my group, the alt-libertarian movement, and some of the memes that were shared, um, I got a call one day from the vice president of the Tennessee Libertarian Party, and he gave me an ultimatum. It was either um, stop, stop doing the memes, stop doing the alt-right stuff, stop doing the alt-libertarian stuff, um, and, and stay with the party. Or if I wanted to keep doing that, I would need to step down from my position with the party. Uh, it took me no time to decide uh, I'll just step down from my position with the party because I'm not going to back off of these things. So um, right after that is when Charlottesville happened, and I actually went to Charlottesville. Um, when I went to Charlottesville, I was still, I still considered myself a libertarian. Um, I thought, you know, I was the good libertarian, and the libertarian party was wrong, and, um, and I was going to go to, uh, you know, I, I went to Charlottesville as a libertarian, and I, I wanted to show that, uh, not everyone in the alt-right, and I was really alt-light at the time, uh, but I wanted to show that everyone in the alt-right wasn't like uh, the, the bad portrayal that, um, that was being put out there. Uh, but I got to tell you, when I went to Charlottesville, that was, a, um, that was an eye-opening moment. And I'm not the only one who, who went there, a libertarian, and left much less libertarian, uh, that, that's for sure. And um, I, I actually, I did a couple interviews. Let, at, hold on, at as well. interject oh, now. How is my audio now? I didn't realize it was so bad earlier. I've switched the camera off, so hopefully it's better now. Um, in the live chat, can you let me know if I sound okay now or is it still dreadful? <coughs> but in the meantime, Benji, can you explain, um, why, and I know this might be obvious to say in your own words, why did you leave Charlottesville, uh, well, less libertarian than you went? Well, so one of the flaws to libertarianism uh, that, that I realized that day is that um, individualism uh, or, or the, the libertarian's interpretation of, liber uh, of, uh, of individualism, which is really hyper-individualism, it doesn't work. Um, when, when you come face-to-face -face with mobs of Antifa and other George Soros-funded groups who, um, you know, who, who are just mindless NPC drones, uh, you, you immediately see that uh, individualism cannot combat this. Uh, it takes collectivism to combat this collectivism. And if you have a system based on individualism and liberty and freedom and, and, and all of that, um, you're going to leave yourself very susceptible to, to these groups who don't share your values. 
So um, libertarianism is self-defeating philosophically just from the fact that individualism needs collectivism to survive. Oh, yes. Uh, this is a, a well-established thing. Um, as you say, if, if you just leave the, the field open for, for everyone to do what these people will want to do, is uh, uh, gang up against you, whether it's religiously or ethnically or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Furthermore, I would say that um, libertarianism is, is self-defeating philosophically in that individualism needs collectivism to survive. And, and it's also um, self-defeating pragmatically because when you have um, free market fundamentalism and, and you just a allow these, these capitalists to, um, to get endlessly empowered, they're going to turn around and grow the state and use the state uh, to their own ends. So libertarianism um, empowers those who then turn around and empower the state. And so libertarianism wants to control the state or reduce the state or end the state, depending on your uh, version of libertarianism. But, but it ends up doing the opposite because it empowers people who want to empower the state. The, the, and the thing about the state, uh, that, that desire for a, a, a small state, it does seem to be uh, white people. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of troubles. Let me switch my camera off and see if that helps. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um. I was saying, oh, I'll wait for you to finish. I am. I do apologize for this, everybody. I didn't. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay, so Benji, I was saying that the desire for a small state seems to be limited. It seems to be a very white thing. Oh yeah, it, it's it's definitely a, a very white thing. And um, if you truly value liberty, and and you go through, um, you know. How, how we get liberty through property rights and, and how property rights came to be. I mean, it's basically just um, an English tradition, an English legal tradition. Um, so, you know, it, you, if you're honest, you see this very quickly. And, um, and it, it seems that libertarianism is just the civic nationalist way of talking about white nationalism. Yeah. So, what did you want to say about Charlottesville? I mean, I, I think that the uh, if you, I obviously I wasn't there, but it, it does say opener for a lot of uh, people, a lot of who who I think that this the sort of skates turned against the uh, the right wing, it, uh, cheered the police on earlier in the day. See, I'm going to turn my camera back on here. Yeah, so um, when, when I was at Charlottesville, um, I, I went there with the intention of like showing that not, um, not everyone there was uh, some, you know, cringy LARPer. Um, but while I was there, I, I realized that uh, critiquing these guys about their cringy LARPing uh, was so far down on the list of importance. And, and when you see these mobs of NPCs who are directly against uh, what you stand for, um, you don't really care uh, about who's standing side by side with you. If they're standing side by side with you, you accept them. And um, so, you know, I, I still think that, you know, there's some bad optics and some cringy LARPing, uh, but these people are willing to stand side by side with me and go toe to toe with uh, these NPC drones who, um, who, who, who oppose us. So the enemy of my enemy is, is my friend in this case. But while I, while I was at Charlottesville and I didn't go there planning on doing interviews or taking any videos or whatever, but um, it was just so ridiculous how everything played out that uh, I couldn't help but pull my phone out and take some videos. 
And uh, that was the start of my YouTube channel. Um, I did not have a YouTube channel before then. I had no interest in getting, uh, you know, publicly involved with this stuff. But I took videos uh, after after the police had swept us out of the street and and enabled Antifa and allowed them to uh, take over the city. I, I pulled my phone out and I, I just took videos from it. I was in a parking garage where my car was and I had a good vantage point and I was able to point out these uh, these roaming mobs of Antifa that were, you know, going around the city. Uh, they had taken over the city with the help of the police. And so I just wanted to expose that uh, on video. And I, I shared the videos on Facebook and someone suggested that I uh, put them on YouTube. So I started my own YouTube channel just to uh, put those videos on there. And, and that was the start of something ha that has uh, become more than that. Right. And is that what people can find on the YouTube channel? So um, I, I've made much more content since then. And uh, there's much more content in the works uh, coming up. But yeah, my first videos on my YouTube channel are my videos from Charlottesville. And if, if you're not aware of exactly what happened at Charlottesville, um, I encourage you to check out those videos. They're very eye opening. Uh, the parking garage that I was in in all of the videos from the James Field, James Fields incident, you can see that parking garage in the background. The um, the mobs of Antifa that I caught on tape showing them taking over the city, those were the mobs that cornered James Fields' car in that alley just seconds after the video ended. So so I have the proof that that these aggressive mobs that were taking over the city. Um, I, I have the proof of them going into that alley and trapping his car. Right. Uh, have you submitted that to the police? Uh, it, it, they're very public, and and that information is known. Um, it, it's not it's not uh, an unknown thing that that uh, that that mob of Antifa went into the um, went into that alley and took over that alley. Uh, I've I've also seen people, you know, uh, talk like they had the right to do that. They had absolutely no right. Those mobs had absolutely no right to take over the streets the way that they did. But yeah, th them taking over that alley was, uh, it, it, it's not an unknown fact or anything. Right. Okay. So is there anything else you'd like to say about the, uh, the conversion from libertarian to all right? Yeah, so just to, just to finish, so um, I, I started the YouTube channel with the Charlottesville videos, and then I started a, uh, a series on my YouTube channel called The Libertarian to Alt-Right Pipeline, or I, I just call it The LARP. And uh, this is another point that I'll get back to here in a second. Um, life consists of genes, memes, and LARPing. Um, but, but I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, so, so I started the um, I started a series called the LARP uh, for the Libertarian to Alt Right Pipeline, and uh, one of the people that I interviewed in this series was Jason Kessler, and this was um, uh -huh. and and this was right before um, Charlottesville two. And um, for those people who don't know, there was a uh, a private group message on Facebook about Charlottesville too. They were, uh, they were doing the planning and organizing for the event in that message. And I was not in that group message, but I was mentioned and my group, the alt libertarian movement was mentioned in that, um, in that group message. And someone from Antifa got into that group, took screenshots, sent it to Unicorn Riot, the leading Antifa website and, and doxed everyone in, in the group. And um, then Facebook received a lot of heat from media outlets about that. Uh, they, they said that, you know, they, they were criticizing Facebook for allowing these people to organize on their platform. And so Facebook responded by um, kicking everyone in the group off of Facebook permanently. And I wasn't in the group. But I was mentioned, and my group was mentioned, and my group was um, was kicked off of Facebook. Um, it had thousands of members. Uh, it was, was a very mentioned. active group. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just because your group was metal. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't even in the group, but just because it was mentioned and Facebook felt the pressure, they um, they, they caved and, and kicked everyone off the platform. And, and another and can thing you is... Um, what the, the Facebook group was like. Can you explain how many followers it had and so on? Yeah, so um, at, at the time that, that it was banned, it had uh, 3,600 members and it was rapidly growing. And it was the largest explicitly alt-right group on Facebook. Uh, there were some other groups that were larger that are pretty alt-right leaning, but but it was the uh, it was the largest explicitly alt-right group on Facebook at the time. Wow! Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, but but then you know it it was it was kicked off, which left me with nothing but my YouTube channel. Um, so I started, um, I, I started a Facebook page, uh, labeled the libertarian to alt-right pipeline. And that is still up. We've got almost 7,000, uh, likes or follows or whatever. And, and it is rapidly growing. I expect to be over 10,000 in the next uh, month or two. Well, hopefully it'll help with that, but I, I hope. Oh, pet and cut it in a game. Oh, can you hear me fine? Yeah, so, so just uh, take it away with what you were saying. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm still having some audio issues. I, I turned off my camera. Hopefully that will help. Um, but, but I caught you saying uh, that, that I hope you help with that, and, and I think you will. And I really do appreciate this opportunity, uh, Was Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think that it, the audio problem, the bandwidth problems are at my end. I'm going to have to reboot everything. Uh, seems to be very bad. I'm sorry about that. I have no idea what's going on. Maybe the weather. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, anyway, is there anything else you'd like to tell people about uh, the YouTube channel or the Facebook page, what they can find there? Um, so I, I've got a I've got a host uh, or I, I've got a I've got a bunch of different things uh, on the on the YouTube channel. I just encourage people to uh, go check it out. There's there's something there for everyone. Um, and then yeah, also go if you're on Facebook. I know a lot of people in these circles have abandoned Facebook because of its policies uh, about free free speech. But if you're still on Facebook, go check out the Libertarian to Alt Right Pipeline. Uh, give it a like. That that was that was all I had to say about the timeline of how I became a libertarian and then how I went down the uh, libertarian to alt right pipeline. Um, I, I've got this. I, I want to read off. Um, it's what I've learned going down the libertarian to alt right pipeline. So, what yeah. I've learned. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, what I've learned is the Faustian spirit in white people paired with our pathological egalitarianism caused us to colonize the world thinking we could teach them our ways. We were wrong. We can't. Furthermore, multiculturalism, which was caused by that same egalitarianism, has caused a reverse colonization in our countries. So what we do about that is yet to be seen but but that's what I have learned going down the libertarian to alt right pipeline. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, I think it is a very uh, common trajectory that people uh, go down or go up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been good to hear your story of it. Effectively, I mean, libertarianism just doesn't work in ultimately the ethnic environment. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. Um, it, it doesn't work philosophically. It doesn't work pragmatically. You know, it doesn't work in the real world or on paper, um, as I've already outlined. Um, we are in, you know, you hear the term late stage capitalism quite a bit. What it really is, is late stage liberal democracy. We are in late stage liberal democracy. And um, I mentioned Hoppe earlier. He was one of the most influential figures to me. Uh, and 
and he really lays this out well. This um this current deal of liberal democracy is not the end of history. Uh, it's not going to be like this forever. In fact, it's on its last legs. Uh, we are in late stage liberal democracy right now. Yeah, I think that's true. I think social democracy is the time that we use in Europe. And I do think it is heading towards its demise. Um, because it, in, in the end, it stands for nothing. It, it protects nothing. And that means that it itself is doomed. Yeah, the the motto of the uh, or yeah the motto of the alt libertarian movement, which was the group that got shut down by Facebook, was fighting the culture war. Um, I expounded on that and said that you know lots of libertarians were out there fighting the information war, uh, but we were there to fight the culture war. And the shape that the culture war is taking right now throughout the world is nationalism versus cosmopolitanism. And I understand that in these nationalist circles, we've all got different views of uh, how nationalism should be, but that is, that is way down the road before that becomes relevant. Right now, all that's relevant is nationalism versus cosmopolitanism. Uh, I think that is a general consensus, um, not only in the dissident right, but on the left as well. It's, uh, it's nationalism versus globalism. Uh, as uh, you know, as I or cosmopolitanism. I mean, it's the same thing, really. Okay, so yeah. let's leave that, it at that. that. I wish about, leisurely, but oh, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. Go on. So that being said about nationalism, you know, we, we kind of all agree that that that's where we have to group together right now, and then we can uh, go over our smaller differences later. Um, that being said, I, I see a lot of people in the alt right wanting to abandon Trump. And and I don't see I don't see the uh, I don't see the point in that um, the way that the system works right now th this has got to be our guy we cannot abandon Trump and become uh, like the Libertarian Party uh, we will just be irrelevant forever um, we we have to we have to stick with Trump and and I think that we have to continue uh, that strategy of latching on to figures who are at least somewhat sympathetic to our cause. And, and create a cult of personality around them, even if it's just a meme, even if, you know, uh, so for instance, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson has seemed to really come towards our side over the past year. And, and it's, I, I think that we should have that same type of cult of personality around Tucker Carlson right now that we had around Trump in 2016. That's a very good point. And Kavanaugh, um other candidate, but I think Tucker Carlson much more. And he needs our help yeah. because he's being attacked by the left. Yeah, absolutely. And and so that's a perfect example of how uh, you know we can latch on to these figures to, to advance our goals. So I think that the number one issue for uh, the alt-right right now is censorship. Censorship is our most pressing issue. And um, and if, if anybody doesn't believe that, I'll just say that, and I'm very American centric in my thinking, uh, so I apologize, but here in America, at least, things are going to get bad. Things are going to get very bad over the coming decades. And we have to have a platform when these things get bad. And um, so, for instance, I, th I think everybody here knows that. Um, that the demographics are shifting and by 2040, even the uh, census will, will acknowledge that white people have become a minority in America. Um, but in 2034, social security is going to run out. In, in the 2020s, uh, the debt is going to become an even bigger issue than it is now. We're at 21, almost $22 trillion worth of debt and it's not slowing down. So, you know, in, in the coming decades, just uh, paying off our payments on the debt is going to become the largest expenditure in America. And, and so we're going to have massive debt problems. Social security is going to run out um, and, and the demographics are, are shifting. And, and so by, by, 20, by 2040, you know, uh, the, the government is going to be stretched thin. The government programs are going to be shutting down and and white people are really going to start waking up to how they got into the position that they're in. And um, 
So, so things are going to get bad and we just need to have a platform when they do. So right now, censorship is our most pressing issue. Oh, I completely agree. I, th I think many of the millennials this year and, um, I've made several videos about it myself. I think you're absolutely right. Right now, it, the, the, well, the priority has to be allying and organizing and uh, coordinating to push for freedom of speech uh, on the internet um, or uh, an alternative system to rival, well, social media as we know it. Yeah. And, and another thing is censorship is a bipartisan issue, or anti-censorship is a bipartisan issue. Um, there, there's going to be people on the right and the left that, that, will, that will agree with us um, about this censorship question. And, and there's a lot of other issues out there that we can latch on to that have a lot of bipartisan support. So like the alt-right is, is the, is the anti-war movement in America right now. Um, it, when, when Bush was president, when I was growing up, the, the Democrats and the liberals were the anti-war movement. And then, um, Obama got into office and the Tea Party, Ron Paul people became the, um, the anti-war movement. And, and, and then that, those people, they're now in the alt-right. The alt-right is the premier anti-war movement in America. And that is a, that is a bipartisan issue. Um, environmentalism is another topic that, that we should take. Um, environmentalism is not a liberal position. Uh, environmentalism should be a conservative position even more than a liberal position. So um, I, I think that being anti-war and, and environmentalism and censorship, these are all issues that the alt-right should, should really take ownership of. I completely agree. I totally agree. But um, OK, let's that, that's been a good one. I, I'm sorry about the technical problems. Apparently, it's been really bad for the audience. I hope that the recorded version is is watchable. There's nothing I this has never happened before. So I don't know what the problem is, but I will reboot everything for the next hangout. So in the meantime, Benji, I, I do apologize that I couldn't give you a better uh, showing uh, there's not much I could do about it. Um, so anyway, I hope that this does drive some people to your YouTube channel and the Facebook page. So thank you for appearing. Could, could, I, could I say one more thing before we get off here? Yeah. So, so earlier I mentioned that um, I think that life consists of genes, memes, and LARPing. And so to, to expound on that just a little bit, uh, civic nationalism is a good meme, but genes are more real than memes. You are your politics, you cannot separate them. So I'm conservative on some issues. I'm liberal on some issues, but I am white on all issues. Okay. All right. That's a, that's a, so let's thank you for appearing on Millennial 2018. I'm sorry that the about the technical problems, but I uh, hope you got some exposure nonetheless. All right. Thanks for having me, Woz. Okay. And I'll be back, hopefully, with webcam and a better connection with Babylonian here in 15 minutes. So I will, well, I'll be then, and hopefully you'll see me then. <laughs> Bye for now.